All right, Chuck, you can unmute. Um, Craig, we'll yeah. start back. Peter. Yeah, I'm here. You guys are ready to go? We're okay. Are we ready? Yeah, ready when you are. Do did you make your announcements yet? No. So if you want, I will do that. Why don't you well, do that? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. If this is your first time joining us or first time in a long time, you'll notice that you are muted and you're going to stay muted throughout the duration of the meeting. The only folks who will be unmuted at any given time are the co-chairs, uh, Craig and Chuck, and any presenters as we move through the agenda. Um, following each agenda item, co-chairs will call on members of the public who wish to speak. You can participate by going to the reactions icon and pressing the raise hand button. It's not the wave or the thumbs up. Those are different. And those those will disappear. If you press only press the raise hand button once. If you press it a second time, your hand will go back down. If you're on the phone, it's star nine to raise your hand and then star six to unmute whenever you're called on. Be on the lookout for a prompt asking you to confirm unmuting once one of the co-chairs calls on you. If you're having problems, the chat is available for technical support only to help with Zoom software. It is not to ask questions of the presenters or co-chairs. They will never see those chats. If you're using an older version of Zoom, you'll need to go to the participants section where you'll find the raise hand feature there. And finally, we encourage you not to raise your actual hand or wave at the screen to get attention as we may miss those and not see you. So if you're having problems, chat me, I'm here to support. And with that, we'll hand it over to Chuck and Craig to get the meeting started. Okay. Welcome to the February meeting of the Transportation Committee of Community Board 8. I'm Chuck Warren, the co-chair and my fellow co-chair is Craig Later. Glad to see people here. Um, I just want to note for the record, and Craig, to get this, that I got a call from Rita Popper, said she won't be able to make the meeting tonight. Something has gone wrong with her system, and she'd like to be excused, and I said, sure, it was a chair. Um, okay. I got a call from Billy Freeland, and he may not be able to um, be here or be oh, here. Okay. okay, that's fine. Um, the first item on our agenda is an update from Fairway on 86th Street. Do we have people here from Fairway? It's a great question. If you, I see Lisa. Lisa is here. Um, Lisa, is there anybody else here? Oh, Rob, Rob. Dan McCarthy. Hi. Yep. Dan, should, Dan is here. Um, we have Tom Santa Croce, and we also got Rob Reinish from Fairway. Okay, good. Um, good okay, evening, everyone. Uh, it's uh, Dan McCarthy from Village. Yeah, Dan, United. right. You see, Dan's been here, right? Right. Nice, um, right. nice to see everybody again. And, we just we just wanted uh, to get. I uh, I also have with me and and go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead, Dan. Finish. Sorry. Okay. No, no, no worries. I just um, uh, uh, happy belated new year to everyone and um, with me tonight is um, uh, everybody will remember Tom Santa Croce who has uh, 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 was responsible for uh, addressing a lot of the issues that we had early on and I think we've, we've, we've uh, come a long way towards addressing community concerns um, and uh, Lisa Farrell who uh, works with me uh, in our uh, corporate offices as well as uh, Rob <laughs> Reinish who um, is uh, now responsible for all of our New York operations. Um, but I thought I'd let Tom introduce Rob to you because Tom has been our primary point of contact with you folks, um, you know, from the inception here in terms of being on the ground. And uh, Rob will, will now be uh, uh, that person. Obviously, you can still reach out to any one of us at any time, but... Uh, uh, just wanted to introduce uh, Tom and Rob to you. Yeah, we just, uh, I think we, we'd like to just get a sense from you folks where you see things at this point. And I know, you know, we've had, we haven't been together for a while, but we had, you were nice enough last year to come to, to several meetings and keep us informed. And I know you did a number of things, but um, I guess uh, there's still some issues and questions that people have and, um, maybe Tom, you, I know you're the person on the ground and, if, or if you or anyone else, however you want to do it, could just summarize where you think things are and, and then we'll get some questions. Yeah, sure. 
Sure, no problem at all. It's great to see all of you again, and Happy New Year. It's It's been a while. Um, so yeah, I'll talk a little bit about kind of where we, we are and some of the things, challenges we've had recently, and then really I'm going to hand it off to Rob after that, because Rob's going to be the main point of contact. Um, you know, going forward, boots on the ground, really in the eight stores in New York, and is a little bit closer to it than I. Um, but yeah, so we, we addressed a lot of the issues last year. I think we had a decent run. I know we've had a couple of hiccups lately, in particularly with deliveries and the way in which the timing of our deliveries from Wakefront. So we reached out to them to really try to organize the deliveries later in the day because they've been coming a little bit earlier. I think that's what's been leading to some of some of the, uh, you know, additional trucks out there, additional pallets out there. So we're working with our partners. I don't have an update today on that, but I did make a call to them really to bring those trucks later in the day. Um, but I'll, I'll pause for a second, really, and, and I'd like to introduce Rob Reinish as, uh, as the district manager there. He might have some in updates on the pallet jacks, because I know we reduced those from, I think it started out at four. I think we got to one. We were bringing a couple inside. There might have been an issue with some of those pallet jacks outside. I think it was more due to the delivery issue that we had. But I'll uh, again, I'll pause for a second and really uh, hand it off Rob. Okay, good uh, Good evening, everybody, and, and very nice to meet all of you. Uh, very nice to meet all of you. I'm going to give you a very quick um, synopsis of my history on the Upper uh, East Side. Uh, my family has been on the Upper East Side for a very long time. Uh, as a child, I delivered for uh, my godmother's dry cleaning store, Storius Cleaners. Uh, we had an apartment at 86th Street, right down the block from Fairway, across from Tall Bagels and the Old Food Emporium. Uh, my parents were members of Catholic Coping Society right on 88th Street, and my father and grandparents lived on 90th. So I have a very long-standing care and love and appreciation for Yorkville and the Upper East Side. Um, I love the area, and uh, although it has changed a lot over the last, um, boy, 30 years or so, um, we are glad to be part of your community. I'm glad to uh, be one of the stewards responsible for that store. Um, you know, as Tom mentioned, uh, the forklifts, we are down to one forklift. We have no more than one at the moment. Uh, and we are continuing to work with our suppliers on staggering deliveries. You know, the largest concern I, I know is, is triple parking and, um, you know, potentially pallets in the, in the street area. Um, so staggering deliveries definitely helps with that. Um, because we have so many, uh, whether they be DSD or, or in-house suppliers, and traffic and all the other things that come along with delivering in New York City. It has been a challenge with our volume to stagger out deliveries throughout the day at a volume that would not clog the street or the sidewalk. And then as you very well know, there's now a scaffolding on that building, uh, which kind of complicates things a bit more. Um, you know, Jim, Jim Governale is the store manager. He unfortunately couldn't make it today, but he is, um, he's very experienced with community boards. He worked with uh, the community board in our, our Upper West Side store. And he asked that I express to you that if ever there is a moment uh, that there is a concern from anybody on the board or any one of the constituents in your area, um, he is willing to give out his phone number, uh, call him anytime or, or visit the store. He, he really wants to make sure that you know that he is there to help you and address any concerns that happen uh, at any point in the day. Uh, and we've really been trying to focus on keeping the congestion down on the sidewalk. I know that was the biggest concern. Um, Jim is also prepared to plant in a flower bed uh, as spring comes around. He enjoyed doing that last year. Um, but we want to make sure you know that we are open to your suggestions and we'll definitely work with you to, to try to keep the neighborhood the way it should be. Thank you, Rob. Um, now we have some questions. I don't see anybody from the public particularly who, uh, well, I don't know if you do, but on my list, I don't see anyone. Um, no. And so why don't we go to the board? And Michelle, her mom had her hand up. Can we unmute Michelle? Yeah, thanks, Chuck. So mm -hmm. welcome, Fairway. Happy New Year. It's good to see you. Um, in fact, you have been extremely responsive to us. Uh, the past couple of meetings that we've had have been very productive. Getting those uh, fork lifts or pallet um, lifters from four to one 
was very helpful because they were taking up all of your parking spots, which necessitated your delivery trucks to be into the, you know, into the street. And then um, uh, customers who would pull up would have an additional lane. So yes, that was quite a mess. Um, however, and we don't want to be in a position, at least I don't. I know we did like a punitive thing last year of, re of changing your your loading regulations and then we put them back but you know we're all not children here so i have really no interest in in uh you know doing something punitive taking it back doing it again that that's really of no interest to me what i what i really am interested in is a long-term solution and because you have the size of the store that you have and yet it's it serves a big customer base, you have great volume. And because you have an interior elevator, which slows bringing product into the store and getting it to the correct department, I think that's where the issue really lies. It was helpful that you got the shopping baskets off the street. Those are primarily inside. But the problem that really hasn't been solved, and frankly, I know it's costly, but I think it only can be solved by increasing your staff. Uh, when your trucks unload, we, we talked about staggering the hours two years ago. So the fact that you're still talking about it means that either you, you know, that that was an unsuccessful attempt. Uh, are, they, are they, you know, lapsing back? or was it never achieved in the first place? So that would be question number one that I, I'd love you to address. The second thing is, is staff. You really need a minder on the street. When, when the stuff is unloaded, it just stands on the street way longer than, um, from my eye, than any other supermarket deliveries. And the pallets are not stacked correctly for a very, very long time. So that the, the time between your delivery and you're actually clearing the sidewalk is, is still extremely inefficient and insufficient for the neighborhood. And I think the only way you're gonna solve that is number one, with a very successful uh, timing, you know, delivery spacing scheme, but also with staff. I think you need staff on the street through both shifts because when a truck pulls in, even if it pulls out, the produce or the, the product, whatever it is, remains on the street. Now, you, you are currently depending on somebody to come outside from inside to handle this. And that's just not sufficient. It's not efficient enough. You need somebody there, both shifts, morning, afternoon shifts, that is directing the removal or the placement of the pallets and bringing the merchandise inside um, so that we don't have to wait for somebody to come outside from inside. I think you know the problem, so I'm not telling you anything you don't know. The secret for tonight is the solution. Uh, you know, you have a big customer base here, many of whom I'm sure are on this board or, or participants tonight. So nobody is interested in uh, undermining you or bad mouthing you, but, but we do have to make that sidewalk much more livable. And now you've got e-bikes that are chained out there. You've got all kinds of vehicles that are out there that have, that were never out there before that take up the sidewalk as well. So those are the problems. But what I'd love to hear from you is what are your proposed solutions and an update on why that timing of your deliveries has not been successful. So thank you very much, whether it be Robert or Tom or both. I'm happy to hear from everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And, and Mr. Chairman, do you want us to do this seriatim? That is. Yeah. Answer. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you do that? We don't have uh, that and, and, and I'll let Tom know. I, I, I do know that we, we, we have been, I'll let the operators really address this, but um, we have been, we, we were successful um, in really trying to enforce uh, delivery times 
Um, and, and there has been a little backsliding by our um, uh, delivery partners, although, you know, I mean, part of it is obviously um, the vagaries of, of New York City um, that, that make it difficult to, to have precise timing uh, in terms of uh, deliveries. But I'll let the operators address what we've done and, and where we are, uh, either Rob or Tom. Sure. So Dan, I can answer that. And Michelle, thank you for your feedback. So uh, let, let's cover the deliveries first. So we, we did actually have a successful period. I believe it was throughout the summer uh, where the deliveries were staggered, um, you know, really from, from first in the morning all the way until approximately eight o'clock at night when we would get our, our largest delivery. And the one that is the most concerning is our, we'll call it our grocery delivery. It's the largest truck that we get with the number of pallets that fills the non-perishable items within the store. And the one thing, unfortunately, that is different from us to our competitors in the area or other supermarkets is just pure volume. Um, we have that one elevator, Michelle, you mentioned that, that there's the one elevator and the challenge is two, twofold. It's the elevator up and down and just the timing of that. Uh, no matter how much staff I put on, there is still one elevator. Actually, uh, it's two elevators. I, I misspoke. You have two elevators. Well, one is a passenger elevator and one is a freight elevator. Passenger elevator cannot carry product. Okay. That's, that's not safe. So um, we have one elevator. It is a freight elevator. And then the other problem we run into, if that grocery truck particularly comes early, is that there is no room within the, the quote unquote back room of the store to place those pallets, which would force us to put them on the sales floor, which would be really not safe for our customers. They would be all over the place and would impede on the shopping experience. So that is the truck in particular that we have been trying to schedule between the four and eight range. Because of the distance it comes and whatever happens along the way with traffic, sometimes the window actually ends up being a little bit earlier. Sometimes there's less traffic. Sometimes it's been on the later end. Recently, it's been coming a little bit too early. And that's where Dan and, and Tom both mentioned we've been trying to work with that supplier to push that one later. If that one comes later, the volume of pallets throughout the day, whether the produce being first, the dairy frozen coming second, various beer vendors, soda vendors, chip vendors, you name it, there's a lot of vendors, meat vendors, there's about four of those. They're all gonna stagger throughout the day. And as much as we try to plan them out, the exact timing can vary by about an hour or so. So there's sometimes an overlap. From a staffing perspective, there is always someone watching the sidewalk. If you look in the little gray doors to the right of the front entrance, there's a receiving office. There's always someone working in receiving. Uh, they are responsible for the sidewalk. I have three receivers in, in that uh, store. One of those mainly does paperwork, but is also able to pull product off, um, off the street. Uh, but again, the problem becomes you have one forklift, you have one pallet jack going back and forth, you have one elevator. So depending on the volume that comes at any given time, we can get a bit backed up. Uh, and I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, I've been doing operations my whole life, uh, I, whether it be with Stop and Shop supermarkets and 40 stores, or whether it be Fairway Gourmet Garage. <coughs> there is just a, um, an efficiency that, that you can't get any more in the store any faster, um, depending on how the flow is with that one elevator. If there is a way, I would love to do it. Uh, the only other way would be putting pallets on the floor, which I don't think anybody wants. If any of you are our customers, which I hope you are, um, that would really ruin your shopping experience and make it very difficult. As far as solutions, you know, again, we are gonna continue to try to push later. Uh, and, and where I really am cognizant um, in the neighborhood are really those two windows, the late and the early. Early, I don't wanna wake anybody up. We can go early, we can go overnight, right? Or Late, I don't want to ruin anybody's evening, right? It wasn't working all day. No one wants to hear trucks. Um, so we're, we try to keep it in a range that doesn't impact the neighborhood, but at the same time, meet the, your concerns of keeping the sidewalk as clear as possible. Um, at this point, I think that works, but unless Michelle, and, and I really want to hear what you have to say, for me, it would be ideal to do all this overnight, but that doesn't work, I think, for the neighborhood because of the noise of the trucks. Right. I was going to just follow up and say, would it help? I'm not sure it would. And is, if it would, is it an option for that very big truck that you're talking about um, to have two smaller trucks so that if their timing was off, they didn't have so much product in them 
that it would make such a big difference on the offloading. Is that an option? Or would Unfortunately, it it's not. It, it's not. It would be uh, cost prohibitive for the supplier, which would then in turn, unfortunately, raise more prices. Uh, and I don't think that's something anybody needs right now. Um, it, it really is the best case to put in, in one large trailer because of the volume of pallets in that delivery from that warehouse. So what's our solution? Since this is an ongoing issue, the street is more... Um, crowded more often than not. So it's not like this is an occasional experience. Um, that and also if you can address the new the new bikes that are out there, all different sizes and shapes, et cetera. Sure, so I can cover that. So I'm not gonna sit here and promise you something that I can't deliver. We are definitely going to space out the deliveries as best we can. The volume of the store does make it prohibitive at times to have you know, a, a lower volume of deliveries. It's just, it's just not possible with our current volume. However, I, again, I'm going to commit to you that I will do my best along with my team to clear that sidewalk as quickly as possible. I did speak with the store manager and tried to come up with a plan of, of utilizing a, a cooler and condensing and being able to possibly bring in more pallets into the store if that truck does come uh, at, an, at an earlier time. Uh, but I don't want to falsely tell you that I can make a miracle happen. Um, because there is just there is just so much space, and unfortunately, or fortunately for us, on a business perspective, so much product coming into the building at once. But I will commit to you; it will be neat, and I will get into the building as fast as possible. Now, as far as the e-bikes, um, and this is something that you know really is somewhat new. Um, so there are, and they're really not even uh, related to Fairway per se. There are third-party delivery partners that pick up, whether it be Instacart or, or um, uh, shipped from Target, they are independent contractors that don't work for us. They're independent contractors that technically aren't employees of any of our um, partners that do delivery. They're independent contractors and they are using a lot of e-bikes. We can ask them, but we unfortunately, and the same with the, uh, del the delivery partners, have no real repercussion on them uh, to tell them to put their bikes away. Uh, we did engage Instacart, uh, which is probably the, the higher volume of the carts. And we told them to um, continually work with uh, communication to their um, independent contractor drivers or, or delivery people, however you want to call them, um, to not park their bikes right in front of the store. It is something that I know you've noticed, I'm sure, all over the city, whether it be across the street, I believe it's uh, GoPuff um, or Getter or one of those. They also have e-bikes. Sometimes they hang out in front of our store. It is something that is uh, kind of all over the city and probably a little bit beyond uh, our control. Um, but we continue to communicate with our, our delivery partners to um, keep down the number of bikes as, as possible, at least hang, from hanging around. Can I okay. ask our well, coach here Michelle, if you could Michelle. have the, those independent uh, businesses come in and speak to us? Well, we'll see if they will. Instacart and those people, yeah. Uh, let me go to Paul Crickler now. Paul, and then you, Paul. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, um, folks from Fairway. I've noticed a massive difference in the past few months. The sidewalk is clearly much clearer, and you, you can just see daylight now. It's wonderful. Thank you. I have one thing to follow on from what Michelle was saying. I'm one of the people who goes shopping at Fairway quite a lot. I go by bike whenever the weather's nice enough, but there's absolutely nowhere to park my bike outside. And so what people who go by bike to fairway do is they have to tilt their bikes down to the ground and use the flower beds, the black things outside. The trouble with that though now is all those spots are gone because of the delivery drivers. So I wonder if you could work with DOT, ask DOT to put in some bike racks outside your store. And I don't just mean one or two of those are round ones, but a series of racks. You have about 15 or 20 delivery drivers the whole time. And the rest of us who want to shop at your store can't actually get in that way. So thank you, but first of all, thank you for all the work you've done, and I want to leave that one with you, please. Thank you, Paul, and 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 I know that DOT is is always on this call, and we would welcome a conversation with them about figuring a solution there. We would love uh, to provide that uh, ability for our customers to uh, be able to park their bikes safely and and uh, securely. Yeah, Colleen is on. Colleen Chattergoon, who's our liaison from DOT. Yeah is on and maybe Colleen, if you can go back uh, and uh, 
mention that and maybe initiate a discussion with the folks there and I think it would be helpful. Of course, sure, no problem. Okay, great. We've got a couple of people, I think, who we have Aura Masarski, who, can we unmute to Aura Masarski, please? Good evening, thank you for letting me speak. Um, I'm sorry, I've not been able to attend meetings recently, um, but um, this is important. I'm on the board of the East 86th Street Association, uh, and we have attempted numerous times to contact Village Supermarket, Fairway Management, and have had very, very little response. Uh, <laughs> our concern are, as the environmental factors, what the street looks like. Uh, we have worked very, very hard with our local elected officials, uh, with the NYPD and other groups to make the street as attractive and as clean and as positive for businesses and for customers. And it's terribly frustrating because what I'm hearing from Fairway is, well, we're trying our best. But there are laws and regulations that are being dismissed, ignored. For example, uh, as far as I know, bikes are not to be chained to tree pits. And tree pits are not to be used as storage areas for bikes or for any kind of detritus. Uh, we have reached out to Fairway repeatedly because we have worked with our local uh, elected officials and local community groups to clean, plant, maintain the tree pits to make them attractive. Not only have we not had any response from Fairway, we also do street cleanups uh, where volunteers from the community, the last time we had one was in the beginning of December and over 50 people showed up to volunteer to clean up the street. I don't want to tell you that Fairway was not particularly helpful or cooperative, but we had to move away from them. The other concern is access for pedestrians. If you are disabled in some way, if you are elderly, if you are pushing a baby stroller, you'll find that there's very limited space on the sidewalk because your delivery folks just sit on the tree pit ledges or on their bikes or they set up chairs on the sidewalk. And when there's no room there, they just go across the street and block traffic to other businesses across the street. So my question is, how are you going, because I'm hearing that there's an improvement, but I don't see it. And I'm there, I walk by the store every day. What concrete steps, other than I'm gonna give it my best, are you willing to take? Thank you. So Aura, thank you very much. Go ahead. Sorry, Dan, thank you very much for your feedback, Aura. I, you know, first off, for those community cleanups, I, me, my team, will be there. I, I'm sorry, I don't know how, how you were trying to reach us. I, I obviously want that. You know, I started off this call with telling you how, for me, how important that neighborhood is. And if it's there's cleanup events like that, my team will definitely be involved in force. Um, we we want to know. Uh, again, I, I'll give you the name Jim Governale at the store. Anytime you walk by that store and there is an opportunity or an issue, he wants to know your feedback and help address it. And also, I, I'm more than willing to help in any way to, to do community cleanups uh, and to assist. Now, the delivery drivers, again, I'll tell you, they're not fairway um, employees and they're not even employees of anybody that that kind of supports delivery out of our stores. They're these independent contractors and some of them may not have anything to do with fairway in general. They may have to be with the go puff across the street um, where I where I've um, tried to help that in any way is if they are Instacart delivery drivers. Again, they're not our employees or even their employees. I tell them, could you please clear out? Uh, and, and, you know, unless there's any type of enforcement, I agree with you. I don't like the chaining to the trees. I don't like the chaining to the flower beds. It, it, it looks horrible. I, I do not control that. And I would love enforcement if there's any type of enforcement this board has um, for people chaining their bikes uh, inappropriately to the trees. 
I support that 110%. We will do our part to keep the sidewalk clean, clear, and, and easily accessible to everybody. And or again, I, I appreciate it. And I really want to hear when those cleanups are because I would love to be part of them. And so would my team. And, and we can provide you with our that you contact can, information. That you can supply. So uh, some can, uh, yeah, can, can touch. Look, Rob, why don't, why, don't, why don't you just give your uh, email address? Uh, sure. If, uh, yep, absolutely. So my name right there on my... Um, under my picture, it's Robert dot R E I N I S C H at wakefern.com. And I will get with you usually within a few hours, if not the maximum 24 hours. Good. Okay. I think we, uh, Brennan Carley, I believe, wanted to have his hand up. And um, can we unmute uh, Brennan? Yeah, I should be unmuted. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. Thank you very much. So I just had a question slash suggestion. Uh, this is going back to the unloading issue. Um, is it possible to create a, let's just call it a virtual loading dock, you know, in the store, i.e. to carve out a section of space? Because what you articulated is that the problem is pallets come off the truck. They have nowhere to go because there's a bottleneck in terms of the elevator and so forth. Right now, the place they go is on the sidewalk. Could you carve out a space that is a little bit larger than a pallet? And I appreciate you need some room for you know staff to be able to move around a pallet. You can't just make it exactly the size of a pallet, but you know a little bit larger than a pallet, segregated from the main shopping area. So I don't know if that means walls or fences or whatever, but something that you could put a pallet into and basically as a staging area, you know, if you will, that would at least get the pallets off of the sidewalk while the you know, the rest of the bottleneck clears and allow you to move it in. I mean, that's what most businesses do with loading docks. And I appreciate you can't sure. literally have a physical loading dock that trucks can pull up to because of the sidewalk in, in the way, but something similar to to that. that that's just my suggestion. And, and by the sure. way, I, I appreciate that that takes away from selling space, you know, but right now you're taking away from pedestrian space. Sure. So, I, you know, I'll describe a little bit of what happens inside the store. We utilize literally every hallway to line up pallets. And then there is, we leave at least 36 inches to one side of that for employees and, and movement of product. Uh, what I did describe a little bit earlier was I'm trying to take some space within one of my, my produce coolers and condense and go up so that I can create a little bit more room for some more pallets within the building. Um, I, I'm hoping that's a pretty good solution because I could probably fit about another 10 in there. And if we get the staggered deliveries that we uh, keep asking for, then I should be able to clear off the majority of the sidewalk just about every single day of the week. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really my goal uh, is to keep it clear. Occasionally there'll just be empty pallets or bales uh, on the sidewalk that are gonna be put on the next truck. Uh, we do have to kind of stage that so it's up and ready to go so that truck doesn't sit there too long. Um, but I, you know, again, it's a great suggestion for me. I, I have to find the space. Um, and that's, that's what we're attempting to do. Um, and we really do squeeze a lot in there. Um, someday, if you, if you want to email me, I'll gladly give you a behind the scenes tour. Um, so you kind of get an idea of what, what I have to, uh, kind of work with, but, um, good suggestion. Thank you. <clears throat> well, listen, Rob and, um, and Tom and Lisa and everybody, we appreciate you coming. And since your group took over at Fairway, you've been very responsive. And as Michelle indicated, you've come to a number of our meetings. You've made you've made improvements. And I think uh, I think given you know it's it's a diff it's a difficult situation because you have things that aren't all in completely in your control. But I think you've come and talked to us and made commitments. And by and large, you've tried to carry out those commitments. So we appreciate your efforts and continuing efforts and um, we'll be in touch thank you Mr. thank you thank you Chairman. very much uh, i look forward to hearing thank from you, you both co-chairs and thank members thank you michelle okay let's go on <clears throat> to item number two which is a public hearing the inner city 
bus stop requests from MJM Travel Group doing businesses, Silver Star Transportation at 1276 Lexington Avenue, west side of Lexington between East 85th and 86th Streets. And uh, there's a letter from DOT on this. Uh, is there someone here from uh, the company or who wants yes. to just briefly talk about this? Yes. Uh, can we, can, are you able to hear me clearly? Yes, we are. Thank you for the inv invitation and uh, thank you for the opportunity as well. Uh, we plan on running a, uh, if, if possible, a round trip with one way in the morning and a drop off in the evening uh, to the Jersey Shore area daily. Uh, this is a private bus uh, with no interruption to any of the inner city travel that's taking place currently. Um, we'll be briefly stopping in, in and out where our main stop is in Midtown. Um, and basically, our drivers are well familiar with the rules, the idling, minimized, not even. Um, they'll be pulling into the bus stop, loading the uh, roster of passengers that are on the list, um, and then carrying away to Midtown and then ultimately to the Jersey Shore area. Uh, how many buses are there, uh, Mary? Just one bus. The one bus a day, basically? One bus a day, one in the morning. Around one in the morning. Running in the back, yeah, okay. Yeah, about 8.15, 8.30, um, more or less. It's still being developed, but more or less that is the, the range right there of that 15 minutes, and then we'd be dropping off approximately about 10 p.m. in the evening. Okay, great. Um, sure. And, and, and do, go ahead, go ahead. do the buses start their run over there, or are, are they laying over up in our district, or are they coming from elsewhere and just coming... Okay doing pickups and then departing immediately? Well, we're, we're conveniently located here in Yonkers, New York. Um, so we're about 45 minutes north. So we are making the first stop at this proposed uh, uh, bus stop and then continuing on to the main, which is in the Midtown where we are, you know, with our other bus stop. Okay, so you'll be coming directly from Yonkers. Yeah, there's no laying over. There's no reason to lay over. Uh, it's just that time in the morning doesn't even allow us to lay over. So we're in and out. All right. And is this the the bus stop that you're proposing using? Is this the bus stop that is currently in place that's also used by um, by Gray Line or? I believe it's Hampton Luxury and they're they have a complete different schedule than us. Um, we, we don't intersect or uh, impede on their operations at all. Okay. I just, yeah, I'm just trying to understand which bus stop it is. There are a few bus stops located on that block between, oh, oh, it's between 85th and 86th. I'm, yeah, I'm exactly. at the wrong, wrong map. Yeah, so I'm not familiar with that. Okay. Um, is there any uh, public comment on this at all? Just as a reminder, go to the reactions icon and press the raise hand button if you have a question about this. I was like Maggie Lehman. Right, Maggie Lehman, I see. Can we unmute uh, Maggie Lehman? Yes. Hi, I've unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thanks very much for your presentation. My question concerns this item and the very next item on the agenda. My question is to you whether you or any of your principals or owners are in any way connected to Aurora, which is the um, the next uh, the next um, item on the agenda. Is there any connection at all? You both have Yonkers addresses, um, and that was the, the basis of my question. Uh, to answer accordingly, we there's no common ownership, and uh, I am one of the owners of this corporation, so uh, there is no um, there is nothing uh, sharing or any connection to Aurora Tourism. No connection at all. You said no common ownership, no employees, no shared anything nothing. at all. Absolutely nothing. Okay, I appreciate that. And and as I understand from the letter, the DOT letter and your presentation just now, it's um, it's two stops a day, one the pickup, one the drop-off? That is correct. It's the first pickup in the morning, uh, and we operate the line, and then our last drop-off would be at the 10 o'clock time slot, more or less in that area. And this is during the season then, right, Mary? Where, where, where does it run from? 
uh, in, in terms of schedule, like, uh, how many, schedule. you know, how many months is this going to be? Is it could be all year? It's an all year. Oh, okay. We service more than just the seasonal travelers. I mean, there's a lot of college students. There's a lot of uh, locals gotcha. that live in that area. Okay. Not second homes per se. Gotcha. Okay, uh, Michelle. Let me Michelle. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> so I read somewhere in the pre-meeting materials that uh, the Jitney is no longer using this space. Is is that true? Is that forever? Is that just for the season? Can anybody give me some clarification on that? I ask because if that's the case, then all this company is doing is taking that, you know, um, that spot. So it doesn't crowd up the stop anymore, but I don't know. Are they out of business or do, are they rerouting? So that's one question. The other is, um, are you planning, are you timing your stop so that because people are boarding with luggage and do you have a certain number of minutes that you plan to stop? Well, to answer the first question, I'm not too sure what uh, Hampton Luxury is doing uh, is doing at that point. Um, so Hampton Jitney, excuse me. Um, so that part I can't answer completely. Um, but the second part, we are for you know the customer experience. We are trying to load. We're trying to be present about five to ten minutes before, like anybody would expect to load the luggage quickly. So we have a prompt departure. Um, and everybody safely seated and, you know, um, situated. And you said that you have a midtown location. We do, ma'am. And so where is that? That's on 50, uh, that's 1651 Broadway. That's uh, 51st and Broadway to give you a better reference point. Okay. Well, my, the question about the Hampton Jitney was really to Chuck and, and Craig. Oh, because... Colleen, Colleen raised her hand. Let me, oh, okay. can, uh, Colleen maybe can answer that, uh, are you, Colleen, can you go ahead? Hi, yes, yeah, I, hi. I can. Sorry, I couldn't find the raised hand. But, That's okay. Um, it, it, Michelle is absolutely correct. The Hampton Liner is no longer operating or using that location. Um, so it would only be this um, operator who will be using the site. So that's yes, so as you indicated, Michelle, is take they're taking the place of the right, um, just fine. It, it, are the Hampton Jitney? Are they going to find another spot in our district where we will be? Um, will they? Well, Right Come now, they're not, to us right, if that's the case. Right now, they're no longer operating there. So, oh, if they choose to come back later on, um, we will be more than happy to accommodate them to make sure that their uh, schedule doesn't conflict with this particular applicant. But from what I know, they're no longer operating at that particular location. And, and I isn't, think isn't the isn't it also just to make the distinction that right. you're talking about Hamptons Luxury Liner as opposed to Hampton Jitney, which does stop. Um, down by 83rd Streets. Yeah, Hampton Luxury Liner, I think, is, took the place of Hampton Jitney, didn't it, uh, Colleen? Yeah, Th this is Hampton uh, Luxury Liner that used to stop there. Right. That's correct, Chuck. Yeah. Is this contract with Mario? Is this per year, two years, five years, six months? How long is this contract? So the permit is uh, usually for three years. Three years. Yeah, it's three years. Okay. Okay. Right, thank you. Good, thank you. Any other? Is there any other questions? Um, so, uh, anyone like to make a motion on this uh, particular item? Yes, Michelle. Go ahead. Uh, unmute, Michelle. So, uh, mo motion to approve. Okay. And then the whereas is should include the timing for the luggage, the fact that it's only a uh, one pickup and one drop off a day, morning and night, and to put the times in. And right. also to state that uh, the Hampton, I don't know if it's the luxury liner or the Jitney, but whatever, the Hampton company is no longer utilizing that spot. And so, in fact, this is a replacement and causes no additional traffic or congestion. I'll bet Craig knows that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to understand, though, because Hampton Jitney uses it. Hampton luxury liner doesn't. So, so, so what is the Hampton Jitney's hours? I well, mean, they, do they conflict? They. So, they Craig, have, it's, Hampton, it's Hampton Luxury Liner that was using that spot, not Hampton Jitney. 
Oh, Hampton Jitney on their schedule has um, pickups at 85th and Lex. Okay. Well, they they are at one point was Hampton Jitney, but now they're a Hampton luxury liner as what Chuck mentioned. No, no, they're, they're two separate companies. They're separate and distinct. Not connected okay. to each other. Well, the site was approved for Hampton luxury liner and they're no longer operating there. Okay, so. yes. that I believe that that yeah. would make sense. Okay. All well, right. so is the statement true that there that there's no increase in congestion or traffic at that spot? For for a single bus, it's hard to imagine that it will create it. Like, Mario, what time is the pickup in the morning? Eight fifteen, he said. Right. Eight fifteen. I see the first bus um, at eighty fifth and Lex on the Hampton Jitney schedule as nine fifty five. Oh, so it's not, yeah, so that's not, okay. It's not any, there's no conflict there. Right, it doesn't, no conflict. It doesn't seem like there, there is. No. Well, is there a second? <laughs> I well, didn't see he's a only, second. He's only got the one stop uh, in the morning, so. No, um, I was saying I didn't see a second to the resolution. Oh, well. oh sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Okay, we got distracted. Go okay, Mohit did it. Oh, Mohit did it. Okay. okay, okay. So why don't we uh, why don't we vote? Is there all? If anyone is in favor, you don't have to do anything. But if it uh, anyone wants to be no or uh, abstaining or not voting for cause, just raise your hand. If you don't mind, let me just read the roll quickly. Yeah, why don't you do the roll too, just to get make sure we have everybody? Yes. Okay. It's myself, Chuck. John McClement, John Phillips, Judy, Lori, Michelle Mohit, Paul, Rebecca Lamort, Stephanie, and I believe that's it. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, raise your hand. Okay. Good. So resolution uh, passes. This will come up at the full board, uh, just so you know, Mario, which is on the, I believe uh, it's. Wednesday the 15th. Right, Will? Wednesday the 15th, yes. Yeah. Comes before the full board on the 15th of February. Okay. Further action needed for me for that meeting? Only if, not necessarily, you could speak in the public session if you wanted to. It's just that okay. you get two minutes in the public session, but then when we're in executive session, we just okay. the board members act on it. So it's up to you if you want to do that. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. The next number three. Uh, this is the requests from for uh, use of an inner city bus stop uh, from uh, Aurora Tourism Services on the west side of Fifth Avenue between 61st and 62nd Streets. Do we have someone from Aurora here? Uh, if you are representing Aurora, please use the reactions icon to raise your virtual hand. No one? Um, do you see anybody? Oh, here we go. Nope, that's Michelle. Um, I, I assume they got notice of, the, of this they meeting. They did, and they were, they flyered and everything. And they huh. said that they would be here. There's a person named Bamiz. Um, well, why don't we why don't we go to the next items and see if they show up or something? Uh, well, yeah. If them, if you're uh, here and you're strange. representing that item, you know, chat me or raise your hand or do something so that we know that you're here. I'll shoot them an email as well. Shoot them an email just in case it's rare that they went to all the trouble like that and wouldn't be here. So <clears throat> why don't we go to number four, which is discussion of the proposed parking regulation change to no standing at the dead ends on East 83rd and East 84th. And Craig, do you want to uh, comment on this? And we, we've we notified everybody. We came up at our last meeting and we said we were going to notice it for this meeting, and we did, and we notified the area. We did have someone write in a letter, 
uh, about this, no, more about East 82nd Street, but still commenting on this. Um, yes. So this is um, an offshoot of our discussion regarding East 82nd Street with where the issue was that there were reports that emergency vehicles were having a difficult time of getting onto or utilizing 82nd Street and being able to turn around because there were vehicles that were parked in the cul-de-sac. And when Chuck and I went to investigate it, we were seeing that there were similar potential issues along 83rd Street and 84th Street as well where you either had on one side of the street um, general parking or no parking rather than no standing, which can keep the, um, the dead end area clear for emergency vehicles. So because we were dealing with the same issue on 82nd Street, we thought it would be prudent to try to have the same discussion to see whether we want to um, consider parking changes parking regulation changes on 83rd and 84th Street in order to preserve opportunities for emergency vehicles to be able to not be impeded if they need to turn around at the dead ends. So that's where the discussion lies. And looking at the situation on each of these particular streets, um, on 84th Street, on the east side, on, on the east side, on the north side of the street, you do have um, a general parking area that extends all the way to the dead end. On the opposite side, you have, I'm trying to recall what that was over there. I think it was only an issue on the south side of the street. I think there was already no standing on the north side and there's a no standing anytime at the dead end itself on 84th street. And then on 83rd street, you have a similar situation where I believe it is on the um, well, on the south side of the street, you have no parking at, at the dead end rather than no standing. And on the south side, you have um, general parking as well. So there's nothing aside from at the dead end itself um, where it says no standing. Um, Actually, no, it's no parking, excuse me. It's no parking at the dead end at 83rd Street. So um, that's the existing condition and I'm happy to um, take any comments that anyone may have for <coughs> discussion. I think we should acknowledge the letter. Yes. Uh, really an email that was sent to us from uh, you know, a resident and um, about the issue of handicap parking. And, right. Uh, and this this letter from a constituent who I believe lives on 82nd Street. Um, 82nd, 82nd Street, yes. Right. Was expressing um, um, opposition to the decision that was made back last year when we had residents of, I believe it was 605 East 82nd Street petition us to right. change parking regulations in front of their building, describing the situation. This constituent um, believes that it, that there were no real issues with emergency vehicles being able to get down the street, and was oh. commenting on the um, the loss of of parking spaces in general and parking spaces that were identified as no parking or able to accommodate people with accessible or handicapped parking stickers or license plates um, as they are permitted to park in no parking zones, but generally not allowed to park in no standing zones. So they were lamenting the loss of, of such no standing spaces where people who have um, park, uh, handicapped parking um, permits to be able to use them. And the general frustration, I think that, um, that there aren't um, such dedicated spaces in, in the city and they are reliant on other parking regulations that allow them to, or don't allow them to park in certain locations. And, and I think there's also a concern, even though this gentleman lives on a, and I see he's here, he said he wasn't gonna be able to make it, but I think he's made it. So um, he will have him speak for himself in a minute, but I just wanted to say the, the concern about doing no standing on 83rd and 84th Street. So 
we have uh, Joel Mercurio who who wrote in uh, to us and uh, about what we were just discussing, and he's here now. And if you'd like to comment, we should unmute Joel. All right, thank you very much, uh, everybody. Um, yeah, can can you speak up here. a little bit, Joel? It's a uh, up a little bit here. It's a little okay. Thank you. Um, this is my first time involved here. I'll try to stick to my script and not that lengthy email I sent you earlier. Today. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. But it was very so, clear. Yes. I mean, uh, clearly, I think you know, Colleen knows all of what I'm going to say, so I'll try to stick to a lot of it. So, we know what these permits are about. Uh, they're not easy to get. It's a permanent disability, uh, not something we want to have. Um, a lot of us have. And I've been here for 13 years. And I'm here to see if I can document all this. Photographs. And, and Joel, I think I think you're can you you're you're coming in very faintly or something. I don't know what's wrong. If you're you're able to make the sound a little higher or something, because it's a little hard. It's it's hard to hear exactly what you're saying. I see. I see. Okay. Uh, That's a little better. Is that a little better? I'll just have to get yeah. yeah. Closer, I get closer. The the better. Yeah. You probably don't want to see my face, but I'll just get closer. Anyway, <laughs> that's thanks. Okay. For yeah. So um anyway, over the 13 years I've lived here, I've seen probably a dozen of these spots that we know, Colleen knows them. I imagine the transportation committee knows and the board, because you guys have been around for a long time. No parking anytime equals handicap parking in the city. There are not a lot of them in the city. They're in front of Churches, synagogues, you know, places of worship, uh, theaters. There's a spot for a couple of cars, maybe. Uh, funeral homes, which could be hopefully not the last place you park, but there are usually no funeral homes. And they're few and far between in the general scheme of things in New York City. Um, and there are times, as you saw in the email I sent, where, you know, somebody in my situation or worse, inclement weather or what have you, uh, it is not easy to get around. Sometimes even in good weather, it's not easy to get around. So to keep taking away accessible spots for disabled Americans or any disabled people, we're not supposed to be going that way. Clearly, we see the city going the opposite way for public transportation. Um, so when you take away a, new, a no parking anytime spot and make it no standing anytime, you eliminate an accessible parking spot for somebody with this permit. At some point, I think it has to slow down or stop. Not asking to add more spots, not asking for any favors, but the elimination of these spots over time, just in these few blocks around here, because if I couldn't park on East Davy Second, as you referenced, that's where I live, I can sometimes have a spot on 80, 81 to 83 or 84, 80 and 81. They were taken away a few years ago in the same fashion. Um, now 82, and now on the agenda for tonight is 83 and 4. Um, we're limiting spots accessibility. In the meantime, more people have these permits. This is, is an aging population in this area. There are two new buildings on East End Avenue right around here that added another 72 units. Um, there's a lot of competition for these spots. There are a lot more people with these permits. Um, and I just don't think we should be reducing these kinds of spots. Now, I will say this. And by the way, the um, request that I saw for 82nd Street um, is a little bit dramatic and a little bit inaccurate. My apartment is on the street level. When ambulances come down the block, they back in. Yes, I agree. It's better for them to not have a black car in front of the entrance of this building or any others. Uh, but they, I've never seen a problem, and I see them for as long as they are outside my window. My, my living room lights up like a 1970s discotheque as long as they're around. So they're there. Again, I understand the EMT employees need to get in and out of the building. But my point is that it could be a compromise. What happened here on 82nd Street? What could happen at 83 and 4? What did happen on 80 and 81 as well? 
the amount of spots taken away are more than necessary. You can put no parking anytime signs, the distance in between, let's say, an entrance, and maybe give it and add a few feet, as they do in front of movie theaters, funeral homes, baseball games, and all that. There's a no parking this time spot here, sign here, and here. And in between, you can put a car or two. You can do that for the entrances for these buildings at any of these blocks and still leave one or two spots. So there is a compromise. Um, just people have to pay a little bit more attention to these things. And how much spots you're taking away for these people with these permits. I have documentation that I can show, photographs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, um, and I have a lot of other observations that I can pass on. So I'll take all of your Okay, thank you. Is for me, I'm all ears. Okay. Thank you, Joel. We'll get further discussion here. Um, if I, I think... could just say before we go on to others, I guess my question for you, Joel, um, is, and I'm trying to figure out the context of, of it in this discussion versus, I don't want to start an entirely different discussion, but want to consider whether it's something we should be having, which is the overall policy of how we provide parking so that people who have the tags and the license plates have the ability to do so because there seems to be, at least to my mind, an inequity that we have them in places where they may not be ideal from a safety perspective for other situations, such as emergency vehicles, such as like on these dead ends. Yet on many blocks within our community, we don't have any spaces whatsoever that are designated no parking or anything else that would permit someone like you to be able to park there. And that presents its own separate set of issues as well. So is really part of this a broader discussion of the needs of this community in and the needs of, of the disability community to ensure that we are equitable in terms of how parking spaces are available? Um, I, th I think I know what you mean, but that's, that's yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, it's a, it's a unique situation to have these dead ends. I agree, and um, you know we should leave um, you know the free space in front of these entrance or emergency vehicles in particular. But then maybe it's going to take something away there, put one or two back, let's say on East End Avenue, York Avenue. But take away maybe can replace somewhere else, maybe not in the dead end, but in a general vicinity. Because now sometimes I, I can't even get the spot as far as 86th Street and East End Avenue in those locations. Um, and again, there are times I can do that walk and it's great. I'm a lucky person considering what I've had done to my, what I had done to me 45 years ago. But um, other people have it worse than me. Sometimes it's just not easy to make these trips. So yeah, take, take what you take, what's taken away, maybe it can be replaced somewhere in the nearby vicinity. That's a great idea. And that's what you're getting at. All right, thank you. Okay, um, go to Michelle. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, it was difficult, uh, Joel, was not only the volume, but you were fading in and out, but I got the drift of what you were saying. <clears throat> Let me say that for the purposes of tonight's discussion, other locations are not before us, uh, but this, these locations are before us. And um, I would tend to uh, hear Joel and leave the no parking wherever we can. However, with all this discussion, I wonder, we're speculating about, um, about the fire department and other emergency services, but have we actually had the fire department or the police come up and tell us whether or not those streets pose a problem for them? <laughs> No, no, not specifically that I know of. Okay, so absent. I mean, it's you know, it's it's a very narrow area, and it's it's right. not. But it's absent not, them coming and well, actually asking us to please convert those to no standing, 
if we haven't had complaints by them and um, and we have needs of the community uh, members such as Joel, I would say let's leave it as it is. Okay. Um, maybe Colleen have do does how does how has DOT looked at these uh, streets? Uh, are you so we we look at these regulations based on complaints and requests that we get. And what happens is that our a bar engineer will go out there and they'll do it. Well, the bar engineer division will go out there and they will do an evaluation to determine whether they can install a no parking or no standing regulation. And if that's the case, then we would direct the constituent to go before the community board to present the request and we would require a resolution from the community board. Um, honestly, if no one's complaining uh, or seeing issue with what the existing regulation is, then um, we don't see the need of making the change. Agreed. On, on this, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, Colleen. Uh, You're welcome. Why don't we hear from Lori? Uh, also wanted to say something on this, Lori. Yes. Hello. Um, Joel, um, I really appreciate um, all of your remarks um, and I agree with them. Um, and I also think that um, we should have some consistency in this area. I mean, there are the, the three blocks, 82nd, 83rd and 84th are fairly similar. Um, the ones further down, you know, 81st and 82nd uh, are a little shorter. But um, I believe that we should have some consistency in doing this because for the reason, you know, that you said, when you look for parking spaces, you just don't, you never know like where they are and it's a little bit chaotic. Um, so my suggestion would be that we put a, um, a no standing anytime at the end of the block. I have no problem with that because, you know, you do want um, emergency vehicles to have access, you know, to get in and out, but then put the um, no parking anytime on the two sides of the, um, uh, the street. Uh, there, there are, you know, there, all of them are a little bit different. You know, they, ha they have a different, um, you know, some of them have a big circle that's, that's not too difficult to uh, maneuver. Um, in general, I don't, except for the two really short ones, like 80th and 81st, I don't think it's that difficult for an emergency vehicle to get in and out of those um, areas. But I, I hear what, you know, the person who wanted a no standing any time, which I thought was ridiculous because it's, that that particular 82nd is like a big round um, uh, thing that any, you know, anybody could get in and out of. The problem is that people who are neither um, handicapped nor, you know, it, it comes down to the old uh, parking, um, uh, the placard abuse, you know, because once they see people parking in, in spaces that say no parking anytime, they go, all right, you know, we can do that. And like the doormen will park there and, you know, the workers will park there. And so that's a problem. Um, and I know that you think that, you know, standing anytime will solve it and it may, but that's really a difficulty for people who have um, handicapped you know, parking plates. So that what I would propose is that we make no standing any time just at the end of the block. And then for both sides of the street, we make it no parking any time. I think that that would settle the, uh, that would solve the problem. Well, just a couple of things, Laura, you, 82nd Street, we already took action on in December. I know. Right, and then we, we've done that. And now we're talking about 83rd and 84th, and they do have some no parking signs on there, right? Uh, Greg, you were... Right, and on, at the end of 83rd Street, it is a no parking in the coldest, in at the dead end itself. And what on about right street. next to it? Excuse me? Okay, what about on 83rd Street? What about, it? it's no parking in the dead end there, but what what about right next to it on the sides there? On the sides, on let me, let me just go back on the north and south sides. 
let me let me just go back to my photos. Just give me a second. I thought I said that on the south side of of 83rd Street, it is no parking on the south south side closest to the um closest to the dead end. And then there's a no standing school days just to the west of there. Um, here we go. Um, so I was taking photos there. Yeah, so on, on the south side of 83rd Street, um, there are, for about one or two car lanes, it's no parking from the dead end and then no standing on school days and then general parking um, at other times. Um, so basically from at then at the dead end itself under the end sign is a no parking anytime sign. And then on the north side, it is a general parking. Yeah, see, it's a mishmash. It really is on, a mishmash. Right. And then on 84th Street at the dead end itself, there is a no standing sign. And then on the on the north side you have general parking going all the way to the dead end and on the south side i don't recall i thought it was no standing at the very leading oh, to the dead end. on 84th street there's no standing in the uh, at the at the absolute dead end there at the, right there is a no standing at the absolute dead end on 84th but on 83rd it is no parking at the dead end okay so that yeah. is the consistency that laurie speaks of yeah so we don't need to no know standing at the dead end on 84th Street then? No, we it would seem like we don't. There's yeah. one side that is preserved no, um, that already has the no standing, it's, it seems as if that's the case. On 83rd Street, though, that is not the case. OK. Um, Joel, do you want to further comment here? Go ahead, unmute Joel. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I was just going to uh, uh, add because I'm, I'm way familiar with every single one of these signs and all the aforementioned blocks. And, and Chuck, you're right. Uh, 84th Street, uh, the north side is um, general parking, the south side in front of the entrance to the end of Square, maybe, is uh, no standing anytime. So there is uh, there are no anytime signs on that block. I know. 83rd Street, um, as Craig was saying, there are maybe two spots, like you said, Craig, from the dead end to, let's say, the almost the entrance of the Brealey School. Then it becomes you know, we'll standing in the schoolhouse. In front of the uh, Tim Bracey again, and that's side of 83rd Street, the dead end to their little driveway to their garage, you could fit two cars for no parking anytime. Um, but as in the email that I mentioned to you, for some reason, that parking garage, unlike the one on 82nd Street, or whatever, uh, they double and triple park. We missed what you said. Okay, I'm um, sorry. Let me get So my point is, um, yes, 83rd Street, as you were saying, the north side of the street, there are a couple of no parking any time from the dead end to the driveway from the garage at um, 10 Gracie Square. Uh, but often I have parked there in the morning and at, I leave at 6.30 in the morning. But I have to wait till I have to go get the guys from the parking garage to pick out the layers of cars that they leave overnight. Now, again, we're talking about abuses of parking. I don't know why they never get ticketed. They have to move a few cars so I can get to work during the time I park there. That's another issue. But uh, as far as the signage, you're right. Um, and 84th Street does not have um, the issues. Uh, I think it's going to be they already have the no standing in um, <clears throat> Well, I, Craig, I don't know what you think, but maybe we ought to just put this aside at this point and, and you know, see if there's anything that we want to do further in this. I yeah. think there's enough. Uh, uh, the situation is a little unclear and as Colleen said, there's no, we're not getting any complaints particularly. And, and maybe at some future date, we may want to look at doing other things that, you know, maybe we want to have 
more no parking anytime on the sides of that, not in, you know, in the cul-de-sac, but on the sides there. Yeah. I, mean, I, I would agree with that. I would think that that could be a future discussion possibly um, yeah. to, to see if there is any interest on, from a broader community standpoint for additional no parking spaces um, that could be used by people that have um, right. license plates and, and legal um, right. Right. Tags. Yeah. yeah, stickers, right. Okay. Stickers. We'll do that. So at this point, we will lay that over till at some point if we want to bring it back. So we thank you, Joel, for your interest and appearance. And so far, and we're not going to be taking any action on, on you know, the resolution the or the item that came up today. And now if you want us to take a look at some of the other streets to see whether or not we ought to make some changes the way you suggested. Uh, that's up to you. So, uh, okay. Uh, Will, is anything from Aurora? Can you hear um, me? Well? Oh, yeah. I don't see the, the person who I was emailing with. But if you are here representing Aurora Tourism, um, please raise your virtual hand by going to the reactions icon or chatting me to let me know that you're here. Nobody from Aurora? We don't see anyone? I, I don't. The only hand up right now is Michelle's. <laughs> I mean, we have to lay this over if they're not here at this point. Uh, there's, oh, no. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe they will show. They didn't respond to my email. And okay, why don't we just why don't we just lay that over? And mm -hmm. we're not going to take. We won't take any action, and we'll see if they'll respond to our next meeting. Because our our policy is if you know if an item like this comes up and no one here to speak to it from the applicant, then we can't you know we lay it over. I'm I'm surprised the applicant's not here tonight. I I know they were invited and will share the email with me. So I'm very yeah. surprised. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Maybe they maybe they lost the address. <laughs> they, they couldn't find the they couldn't find it. Okay. No, any, no we were uh, very Colleen, happy with email. With the email. Any uh, updates, Colleen, from you? From um, so we are putting together our milling and paving schedules for this season, and I, I, I always tell the community board to please email Will any streets that you have that you feel that are are, are in deteriorating condition um, that you would like us to look at for me to, um, you know check with our uh, roadway division to see if it's eligible for milling and paving. So please, if, if you can give Will a, you know, a list of location, that would be really helpful with us putting together our paving schedule for this year. Okay. Other than that, all is well at DOT. You know, we have been meeting to review our upcoming safety improvement projects. Um, we've been meeting with all of the divisions to make sure we're all coordinated at the same level. So we will be coming to the community board with some good stuff. Okay. Well, let's see if there's any old or new business. And Colleen, there may be issues that come up for you to respond to. Sure. Um, so why don't we, anyone with any old or new business? And I see uh, Heather Amon. Why don't we unmute Heather? Uh, thank you. Hi. Um, um, I'm, uh, I live on 83rd street between second and third and, um, forgive me if um, this isn't the right venue to bring this up, but I, I didn't know where else to, uh, where else to go right now. There are two, uh, 40 story towers that are being built on either end of the block. One at the corner of third, one at the corner of second, uh, both on the South side of the block. And right now it's impossible to safely cross from the South side of the block to the North side of the block because there's no, you can't get to a crosswalk. So you have to jaywalk, which isn't a huge deal on the west side towards Third Avenue because you have a clear view of the traffic coming. 
but on the east side of the block um, at the Second Avenue construction, you can't see anything coming until you're actually in the middle of the street because of um, construction fencing that's happening around the site. So there was something somewhat similar, a, a similar condition. I, I can't remember exactly. I think that it was happening uh, during the time of uh, the subway construction. And um, at that time, they put in an interim stop sign so that at least the cars coming from, you know, traveling east to west across across the block on 83rd knew that, that there was a possibility that humans might be crossing. So uh, again, um, not sure if this is where to go with this problem, but uh, it seems just very, very unsafe to me. Well, Heather and Colleen, it's, it's the right community you're raising this. Right. If you don't mind, can you email this to Will? And is, I will I'll have- say this, this is my, oh, well, I, I came last month um, and didn't you know, raise my hand fast enough. This is only the second time I've attended a meeting. So I, I don't know who Will is and I don't know. Uh, okay, um, Will Brightville is the district manager. You can okay. email him, but I will, I will put my email in the chat as well. And okay. you can send me the email as well and just copy Will. I'll have an inspector go out there and I will work with the um, our permitting office that gave these permits to these two developers um, to work at the location to determine uh, what can be done to make sure that they're safe crossing for pedestrians. They really should be a crosswalk. So I, I would yeah. have to like investigate this a bit further and sure. um, we'll see what we can do, okay? All right, thank you very much. And, You're and Colleen, if, if, Colleen, if you could also just have the inspector make sure that there is enough um, space for pedestrians to actually um, walk through um, the area on the east side of 83rd Street. I know that that seems extremely narrow and yeah. I don't know if it is meeting the legal requirements for with, um, especially if you're there with, a, with um, a stroller or a wheelchair, it is really hard to get around. I, I don't see how you could cross if you're in a stroller or, real, uh, or a wheelchair near near Second Avenue. Yeah, There's on the east side. No way to do it on the east side of the of the block. No. Yeah, yeah I've noticed that yeah. myself. It is extremely narrow, and okay. I wonder whether it's in compliance. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just put my email in the chat, Heather. If you could just send okay. it, to, send me something. Yeah, thank I'd you. Be more than happy to follow. Yeah, to yeah I think we'll, on it I think and will will did I don't know if will put uh, anything in the chat where his email he's at I chatted at Heather oh I see it Thank oh you. you did okay good see there's there's never a dead end at the uh, transportation committee right those who don't get it don't, yeah it's okay <laughs> that was a reference but, to the last that, time. that should be our committee's tagline from here right on. exactly <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> uh, for, let's see. We have uh, Maggie. Maggie Lehman uh, also has raised her hand. Maggie, you put your hand down. So thank you. Oh. Oh, Hi. Go. Thanks again for for calling me a second time, Colleen. While while we have you on the phone, I wonder if I could address this question to you as well as the transportation committee. And um, the ask I have concerns the. Um, one of the many Excel construction projects in the city, this one, the one on First Avenue between 79th and 80th Street, um, and as we all know in the district, I guess, and, and on, as you know on Community Board 8, it takes up an entire city block, the construction site, <clears throat> 79th to 80th, and then about a quarter of the way in on 79th and a quarter of the way in east on 80th. Um, the, 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 um, the, the digging and the foundation, the digging deep, preparing for the foundation has been going on, I guess, six or eight months. The, the issue I'm bringing up today is that no matter how hard many of us in the area, um, on 80th Street, on 1st Avenue, on 79th Street, <clears throat> have addressed with Lend Lease construction, the stopping, the idling of engines of the trucks that start parking there at 6, 5.45, 6 a.m., 6.15, uh, no matter how hard we try and um, using city agencies, 
contacting our council member, it does reoccur. Um, the foreman of the job is nice enough when I speak to him at six at, at seven in the morning, and he just goes and tells them to turn off the uh, the engine, and then it repeats itself. And of course, it's um, the, the the job is as we know six days a week, seven a.m. to six p.m. Monday through Saturday. Um, I won't say it happens every day. I'll say it happens roughly. I'm pretty accurate here three to four times a week. Um, When the engines start idling, and they're multiple trucks, they're dump trucks, they're vendors loaded with um, equipment, so they're they're multiple trucks um, at various times. Um, The heavy load is between six and nine, and then scattered throughout the day. My ask of you, Colleen, if you'd be kind enough, or the transportation committee. My ask is to prepare some sort of written communication to Excel, because Excel, of course, has hired Lendley's construction. The so Lendley's crew, they're nice guys. The foreman is a nice guy. The assistant guys, they, they could not be more polite and more sympathetic. They have expressed difficulty, even when they call the company, that they can't get the companies nor the drivers to take it seriously. There's just an indifference. I'm aware of the city agencies with a link where we as individuals can um, connect with a link and file a formal complaint with three-minute videos. A number of us have done that. I'm aware of filing complaints with 311. They all have up to 90-day turnarounds. And of course, the damage is being done day to day. A second part of my ask here is that, again, several times a day, a day, there's so many trucks that they take up the one lane because of the construction, um, the one lane traveling west on 79th Street which is where the egress um, and and exit from the construction site is. It's on 79th Street. It's not on 1st Avenue. Um, Several times a day, there's so many trucks lined up that they actually um, um, block the entire driver's lane traveling west. Um, 79th Street has been reduced to one lane traveling west, that lane is blocked um, uh, many times a day, every day. Sometimes traveling east on 79th Street, too, because sometimes the trucks will park on the, on the, the west. Here's my ask, Colleen. Would the Department of Transportation consider, because this is going to be, give or take, a four-year project. It's a... It's a um, It's a building, as I said, that spans an entire city block, 79th to 80th, and it it um, rises to about 440 square feet. So in regular regular ceiling height, that's give or take a 40-story building. My ask is whether the the, the ingress, if that's such a word, an egress, can be changed from 79th Street to First Avenue. Um, First Avenue is a one-way street. First Avenue still, even with the bike lane and parking, has more than one lane traveling. Um, First Avenue doesn't have two crosstown buses like 79th. First Avenue only has one. And guess what? The bus stop has been moved from 79th Street to 80th, between 80th and 81st. And there is nothing on the east side of First Avenue except this construction site. It, the, the, currently on 79th Street, the multiple trucks interfere with school buses, which populate that 79th Street with the apartment buildings just east of the site. There, there are multiple school buses in the morning, starting at about nine and going okay, to Okay, Maggie, can you sum it up it's, here? <laughs> yeah, so my sum up, uh, thank you for jumping in. Colleen, we'd appreciate it if DOT, maybe with the help, 
could look into getting Excel to change that, the ingress um, and exit from 79th to, um, to 1st Avenue. Both of these are, are through you, I think, and for Excel. So Maggie, me, um, just I'm, Maggie, just so you know, we work very closely with Excel to determine the best, um, you know, locations for their um, construction site where they can, you know, perform the work that they need to perform. I'm sure there's a reason why we chose that particular street as opposed to First Avenue. I'd have to, you know, check with our permit office, the project manager for this. Um, but you know, in the meantime, you know, there issues that you're mentioning with the trucks coming there early, idling, I think, you know, it'd be a good idea if the community board sets up a meeting with Excel and Glenleys to talk these things through because they're going to be there for a while. Sure, that's something we can uh, see if we can arrange. Yeah, I'll be more than happy to join in that meeting and, you know, have someone okay. from our permit office as well join. Okay, good, thanks. Okay, um, next so we Maggie, have- So I, I will get back to you, um, or to Will, about, you know, the permit stipulations that we provided to Excel, okay? Yeah, good. Thank you, Kain. We have a couple more people who want to comment. Uh, Evelyn, David, can we unmute Evelyn? Hi, hi, good evening. This, this is really off subject, and I'm thinking this might not be the time to talk about this. It's about the new vision plan for Fifth Avenue, um, making Fifth Avenue into one lane. So, you know, our whole New York City, I, I don't know if you know about the retirees and the health care system that is being uh, attacked um, for retired seniors. Um, so I think I'll talk about this later, but, but the whole idea of spending any money on sidewalks, expanding sidewalks and taking away lanes for drivers, backing parking uh, uh, things up, making Grace Fifth Avenue one lane is insane to me. So um, maybe I'll wait until this hits your, the community board. Will it hit the community board? Because it starts from 59th Street and goes down to 42. But it involves yeah. Keith Powers yeah. is advocating for this. So when would be a good time to? Yeah, when we get when it gets a little more, we'll, I'm sure we'll be asked to comment on it too. Okay. So okay. We'll, All we'll right. Keep, Thank you very much. We'll keep you posted, Evelyn. And I know you follow the committee. So. And, and um, can we just confirm with Colleen? I know that technically the project area is not in, within CBA, but would actually have would clearly have impacts on community district A. So. Can we um, get a commitment from DOT that we'll receive a presentation when plans are yeah. finalized? We, when, when we cross that bridge, yes, we will come and give you a presentation. It's not directly in your community board, but of course it may impact, so yes. Uh, great, thank you. Good, thanks. <laughs> Remind me of that, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> we will. Uh, okay, next to uh, Dylan Geronimo Kennedy. Had, can we unmute uh, Dylan? Hi, I, I just wanted to quickly chime in when there was the discussion about um, on 83rd between 2nd and 3rd, just wanted to add that as someone else in that neighborhood, uh, it, it is really difficult around there. And there's uh, just a lot of construction at, construction at three different points along 83rd. And obviously we need that. These things need to be built, um, but just anything that can be done to make it a little bit easier to navigate that area as a pedestrian would be much appreciated. But that's yeah. all I wanted to say on the issue. Okay, good. Thank you. Dylan. And then the last comment at this point is Stephanie Rector. Stephanie? Can you do it again? Go ahead. You're, you're, we hear you now. Oh, okay. I just wanted to inform folks that Northwell um, has released new plans for the tower on Lexington Avenue and 77th Street. Um, they, they have been to uh, the February 28th zoning and development uh, meeting, but it will have tremendous ramifications to transportation. Um, I listened to uh, the people 
uh, complain about the construction on uh, First Avenue or, uh, and, and the problems it's causing them, this will cause um, multiple transportation problems. The entrances on Lexington Avenue, the, um, the plan is for eight years of development uh, on a 436 foot tower. Uh, I just wanted to alert you that um, the transportation will be uh, called into this as well as zoning. I um, will, I uh, emailed you the link to all the, the files that have been, that were released, the, the public filings that have been released on Monday. If you could put that in the chat. And yeah, and Stephanie, we, like, like I said to you in email, this is go, they're going to present to us at our uh, February Zoning and Development Committee meeting. So right. until then, I think that's really, you know, people can go to the city planning website, but, you know, it, it is something that we should just wait until we hear from them. Uh, and, and fair fair enough, I, but I'm sure you, you will be hearing from many people on transportation issues. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, okay, no, no further comments. Are we ready to adjourn? Anyone? Uh, okay, Michelle, I take that as a motion to adjourn and, and seconded. And so we are adjourned. And thank you. See everybody at the full board meeting.